Science is a very important subject in public schools for many reasons. It teaches students how to figure things out using logical means such as analysis and observation. It may seem like it's just something that everyone has to get through during high school, but it actually teaches students how to solve problems in everyday life. Science teaches students to look at problems from an intelligent viewpoint and not simply to believe something without concrete evidence. The most important ingredient in science is logic, which should be obvious to everyone regardless of what their belief system is. So I find it pretty ridiculous how many people there are who argue that creationism and intelligent design should be taught alongside the theory of evolution in public schools. Fundamentalists have attempted to incorporate these beliefs into public school systems over and over despite the fact that there is no scientific evidence supporting them whatsoever. They've even gone as far as to try and fundamentally redefine the word science to incorporate supernatural beliefs. When they failed at their attempts to get fairy tales taught in science classes, they decided to target Darwinism and get the theory of evolution pulled from public schools. For this very reason, it's important for everyone to understand why teaching creationism and intelligent design in public schools is so dangerous, as well as why teaching the theory of evolution is so important, mainly because there's never a shortage of religious fanatics out there ready to try and change things for the worse with their ignorance. Now there's some people that want to remove God from America entirely and, uh, you know, right here in this country that is, you know, one nation under God. You Fortunately, the vast majority of biology textbooks today really center from students any of the science that challenges Darwin. Jesus. Jesus. Call him Jesus. See, Jesus was yeah. a real guy. I could see him. Yeah. You know, I know what he did. And... A Harris poll conducted in June of 2005 asked a thousand adults nationwide whether or not they thought evolution, intelligent design, and creationism should be taught in public schools. The poll revealed that only 12% believed that evolution alone should be taught in public schools. That number was nearly doubled by the 23% of people who thought that creationism should be the only one taught. 55% of the total adults polled believed that all three, intelligent design, creationism, and evolution, should be taught together. Because the percentage of people in the United States who believe in God is drastically higher than the percentage of believers in many other countries, this isn't at all surprising. To be fair though, there are plenty of ridiculous things that us Americans happen to believe in. 21% of Americans believe in reincarnation, 29% believe in astrology, 31% believe in witches, 35% believe in UFOs, 41% believe in ghosts, and 74% believe in angels. Have you heard this? Yeah, three out of four people now believe in angels. What are you, fucking stupid? <laughs> Has everybody lost their fucking mind in this country? First and foremost, it's important to understand exactly what each one of these ideas are to help put everything into perspective. Way back in 1859, Charles Darwin released the book On the Origin of Species by Natural Selection and put forward the new theory of evolution. Within 50 years of the book's release, the majority of the scientific community around the world, including the U.S., had rallied behind Darwinism. Evolution is the process that allows species inherited genetic traits to be changed and then passed on to another generation. After enough changes over a very long period of time, the differences become so big that a new species is created, and the two branch off from one another. The basic premise of evolution is that creatures will adapt to their environments through natural selection, which makes it easier for genetic traits that help a creature to be passed on to that creature's offspring. If a creature fails to adapt, then it will most likely die off and become extinct. But if enough new genes are created and passed on, a creature's DNA will become so different from that of the original creatures that the two won't be able to breed with one another. When this happens, it means that a new species has been created and they begin to branch off from one another. The evidence of the theory of evolution is so overwhelming that scientists don't argue whether it happened, but how it happened. Many people see creationism as a Christian or sometimes Islamic belief, but it actually covers much more than one religious ideology. Creationism is the belief that the universe, the earth, and human life were all created by a deity or multiple deities. In western civilizations, it's usually based on the creation of the world according to the Judeo-Christian Genesis story. But creationism is a term that covers any belief that includes the universe being created by some sort of god. 
Recently, the word creationist has been used to refer to any group of people that reject the theory of evolution because of religious motivation. Regardless of the fact that the theory of evolution has nothing to do with how the universe was created, creationists want the belief of creationism to be taught in schools as an alternative to Darwinism, mainly because Darwinism teaches that evolution has been taking place for billions of years, and that the idea that the Earth is merely 6,000 years old is ridiculous. Intelligent design is the idea that the universe must have been created by a designer or deity. It's similar to the teleological argument which states that if something is too complex, purposeful, or beautiful to have happened by accident, it must have had an intelligent designer. And because God is supposedly an intelligent designer, it is concluded that God exists. Shortly after teaching creationism in public schools was deemed unconstitutional, a group of creationists decided to disguise their original belief as a scientific theory. However, intelligent design is just as illogical, irrational, and as far from science as creationism is, and both of these beliefs do not belong in public schools. The first reason that creationism and intelligent design, as well as any other religious belief, cannot be taught in public schools is that to do so is a clear violation of the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment of the Constitution. It states that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion. This clause has been used by the Supreme Court to overturn state laws that involve the government poking their noses into religious activities. Two examples of this would be the 1962 Angel v. Vitale case and the 1985 Wallace v. Jeffrey case, where the Supreme Court overturned state laws involving prayer in public schools. The legal doctrine that requires the government and religious institutions to be kept separate from each other is known as the separation of church and state, and is one of the major ideologies that the United States was founded on, is secularism. Secularity helps keep everyone safe from religious persecution, discrimination, and intolerance, as well as make sure that everyone has equal rights regardless of their religious beliefs or lack thereof. There are no laws prohibiting students from practicing any form of religious belief or prayer as long as it doesn't disturb anyone else in the school or infringe on someone else's rights. This right is protected by the Free Exercise Clause of the same amendment. However, it is important that public schools make sure that everyone feels comfortable in the classroom, and in order to do this, religious belief must not be instructed. Having a specific religious belief such as Christianity or a more general one such as creationism taught in schools is a form of favoritism and clearly violates the Constitution. The Establishment Clause also prohibits religious belief from being taught in public schools because these schools receive public funding. By paying for religion to be taught with public funding, the government is discreetly making everyone who pays taxes support a religious belief that they most likely don't want to support. In addition to violating the Establishment Clause because of the preference of one religion over another, it's unfair to teach creationism or intelligent design because of where the school's funding is coming from, the taxpayers. The founding fathers of this country came from various religious backgrounds. Some even considered themselves atheist or agnostic, but they all had one thing in common, and that was the fact that they all supported the idea of a free and secular nation. 